Welcome to the Phase World Podcast. Engaging conversations that cross the boundaries between business, art, and the digital world. My guest today is Christina Reed. She's the co-producer of Big Hero 6, which is in theater now, released on November 7th, 2014. She's the producer of Paper Man, which won the first Oscar for Disney animation since 1969. She also worked on Frozen, Wreck-It Ralph, Tangled, Princess and the Frog, Winnie the Pooh, Prep and Landing, Madagascar, and Shrek. I had the pleasure to meet with Christina Reed a few years ago in her LA home. Though I had a good job and I was able to learn from very smart and accomplished people, at times I still felt disconnected and lost. It wasn't planned when I started talking to Christina about my career and I ended up learning so much that day, more than what I can remember from Sheryl Sandberg's Lean In. It was an unforgettable experience and really a privilege for me to be able to connect with another woman who is so creative, thoughtful, and authentic. Perhaps it was the epiphany of this podcast. I thought to myself, why don't I share Christina's knowledge with other women in my life? I wished our conversation then was recorded so I could go back to it, send to others. Well, Christina has accepted my invite to be on this Phase World podcast. As I found out during recording, she had no idea about the impact she had on my life. I hope you are just as excited for this episode as I am. All the show notes, links, and resources can be found via my blog at phaseworld.com. Enjoy. So, Christina, thank you so much and welcome to the show. Um, you have a very busy schedule. Not to discount my other interviewees, but really for you to squeeze in uh, this much time. Uh, well, Big Hero 6, one of my favorite movies of all time. Yeah, yeah, yay. Yay. So you're the, you're the producer on Big Hero 6, and I am eager to chat with you about the process. So I am a you... co-producer. Um, mm -hmm. the, my partner was Roy Conley, nice. who has the title producer. Fantastic. So, um, you know, I'm very new to the entertainment industry. Uh, do you mind explaining what uh, producer or slash co-producers or roles are in the scheme of your world? Um, and not, I don't mind at all. You go through a process here where you, you build a screenplay, you start storyboarding the movie, cutting it together with scratch sound, and screening it regularly for the studio and getting feedback. Mm -hmm. um, and the idea is as sequences start to resonate and land, you move them into production, with the goal being that you're moving things steadily into the production pipeline in an even flow um, so that there's just, as we call it, it the machine uh, gets up and running and moves very consistently up until the last frame is produced. Mm. So in a nutshell, um, the producer is in charge of driving the creative progress into production, managing the overall schedule and the overall budget. And there's, there's many more people who contribute to all those pieces, mm -hmm. but the producer is sort of the leader and final decision maker on all things. Mm -hmm. Sounds, uh, I, I can uh, relate to that. Um, I, as I mentioned before, producer is in my title. Uh, but to put things in perspective, I typically manage a team of 10 to 12 people. The budget, the large of, of manage is probably slightly over a million. So in terms of scale, Christina, do you mind giving us a sense for the, possibly the number of people involved, uh, a rough budget, and the timeline here I'm looking at three, four years in the making for Big Hero 6. Yeah, so in the course of an animated picture at Disney Animation, probably 400 people will work directly on the picture. Wow. And then another 
a uh, hundred or so, a couple hundred maybe, will support it in all different other ways like um, uh, recruiting and human resources, uh, um, finance teams, um, building and sort of uh, operations teams. Um, yes, they typically take four, maybe a little bit more years in the case of Big Hero 6. We were greenlit officially in May of 2012. It had two and a half years, which is mm-hmm. pretty aggressive for an animated film in our in our world. Mm-hmm. Um, and the thing about those particular numbers and the type of um, animation that is that there's a lot of pressure to make the movie good. So a lot of that time is really spent making sure we have made this movie as um, funny as possible, with as much heart as possible, and just as high entertainment value as we can possibly provide. Mm -hmm. And that is really what takes so long, is that we're constantly polishing the story, um, even as pieces are going into production, Mm -hmm. we regularly, every sort of three months or so, we put the whole movie up in whatever state each piece is in Mm -hmm. and look at it and make sure that it's coming together in a way that makes it for uh, makes it a really strong entertainment experience Mm -hmm. and then you know honestly i feel like i'm a little girl in the candy shop i if i wasn't for a podcast i would be bouncing on my chair right now this is (laughs) (laughs) just hearing the process as a project manager i get so excited and it is so fascinating um and you know, I think most people really cannot imagine or immerse themselves into this uh, production experience. And the fact that the work doesn't stop the moment you release the movie. And let me just say that I looked everywhere, as I always, IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, and even Metacritic has given extremely high score uh, to Big Hero 6. And I'm not surprised. I'm extremely impressed. Um, but you know, I was wondering, perhaps you are more critical of yourself and of, you know, uh, what do you consider overall this is a success? Are you, are you satisfied? Are you happy with the result? Oh my God, with, with Big Hero 6, I <laughs> love that movie. I think it's, um, it's a combination of many things that I'm personally passionate about. Um, mm-hmm. You know, kids who are into science, um, the idea of a boy who loses his brother and builds a robot, mm-hmm. um, you know, in, in an effort to be a companion. Um, mm-hmm. I love the uh, mashup of cultures. I love the diverse cast. There's so many pieces of that movie that I'm personally really attached to and, and believe in really wholeheartedly that I'm thrilled how audiences are reacting. Mm-hmm. Um, you you just you don't know until the movie actually comes out. You you just keep making it the best you can here and um, mm-hmm. guiding a lot of people to uh, put their heart and soul into it. So it's very satisfying when it goes out into the world and people respond the way they've responded to Big Hero. Yeah, and I think Christina, you touch upon a really interesting point that for me, uh, after listening to podcast and. Um, uh, people who are very well known as authors, you know, comic book writers, and the consistent theme is nobody knows how a piece of work is going to perform. Uh, given how experienced everybody is, you almost cannot predict how the audience is going to react. And is it a thrill or is it a, um, I guess it's an unsettling experience. I don't know how you respond to that. I feel like mentally I might not have the capacity to work on something for three, four years. And in my mind, it has to succeed. And how do you manage the stress and expectation, not just for yourself, but your team members? Well, you are surrounded by um, passionate and incredibly creative, brilliant people. So it's not... uh, it's not something you're shouldering alone. I mean, starting with John Lasseter, who's very, very hands-on in a project and um, truly some of the greatest uh, digital artists in the world. There's mm-hmm. a there is a huge uh, pool of talent here at Disney, so it's far from mm-hmm. you're, you're you're not doing it alone. <laughs> <laughs> you're getting support. <laughs> yeah, this this is great. And it's uh, yeah. it is the ultimate 
team sport. Mm-hmm. And that is really a huge part of the process that's so satisfying is that when you cross the finish line, you cross the finish line with a lot of fantastic people who've also poured their heart and soul into a project. Mm-hmm. Um, so finishing is a high of its own. Yeah, if I may steal that for the title of this uh, blog post, it's ultimate team sport. I really like I really like that saying and it's so much so in what you do and you know, years ago, I tried to study uh, 3ds Max, Maya. I was so enthusiastic getting into it, and perhaps I was still in college, and I seriously considered a career in Disney, Pixar, animation. And I realized I did not realize how much work there was, even being a student of Maya. How much, uh, you know, every student would spend literally 15, 20 hours, and you know, sleep at the school to finish their project and. Uh, if I still remember, for every uh, second, every 30 seconds, or hours, sometimes months, so that pour into that duration of the work. Is that true? I and mean, Is that true in the professional setting as well? How does that translate, I guess, depending on the scene, but you know, how much work is equivalent? How many hours FTE, total level of effort, goes into? Uh, such a human God, I don't project. know. I've never thought about quantifying it that way. It's um, it's thousands and thousands of man weeks, many, many overtime hours. Mm-hmm. The thing about these movies is when they take four or more years, you have a finite number of them that you will um, influence in your lifetime. And um, mm-hmm. there's a passion here about really bringing your best each time. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're building your, your personal legacy as well as, as Disney, so everyone takes that very seriously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think we revealed, um, I, I want to change the tangent a little bit, and we revealed that you are a mom, and um, you know, I really enjoy meeting both of your kids, and when I saw them the other time, there must be only 10 or 13 years old and now your son is possibly taller than you are and he is it's funny you mentioned that he is <laughs> yeah and you know one of the things that oh, really resonated with me or really two things when we met up um, years ago that your kids were so young and uh, you know I was an adult probably in my late 20s and we sat down we had this casual conversation and your your kids were having a regular like an adult conversation with all of us and that's uh, that's one, and I remember. And the second part was um, part of the theme why I'm so enthusiastic to interview you is we sat down for perhaps five to ten minutes, and I really, I deeply questioned my career at the time, but being able to speak to a woman, a mother, uh, who can provide such insight and give me ex- extreme level of comfort and um, really significantly reduce my self-doubt, and I don't, I don't mean in such a spiritual way, and this is a very spiritual podcast, but it was so powerful. Um, wow. Yeah, it wow. really um, resonated with me in a way that I didn't quite expect. Um, you know, I, I, I work in, a, um, in an agency and really looking back, agency, technology, consulting, I work with mostly men. Um, and I hadn't had the opportunity to consider many women as my role models, as my mentors. And, but in our 10, 15 minute conversation, I, I I felt very included and I didn't feel intimidated that you are at such a caliber that, you know, honestly, I would, might not ever reach to in my own career, but um, I was able to learn a ton from you and to be able to see um, your kids and knowing that I want to be a parent one day. I feel like that, that's a really interesting dynamic um, there. And um, I guess I'll break down my question a little bit is... Um, I know, I feel like I just sat through like a whole lot of extremely flattering stuff and I'm not even sure how to respond. You know, I really surprised myself in that in a very uh, short trip and I guess it's a two-part question. I'm interested in how your kids responded to um, Big Hero 6 and perhaps how responded to other many other movies you've produced as well. That's part one and part two is how they um, respond to you in such an awesome, <laughs> to me, such a great career. I used to mention to my friends, I love my parents to be working in Disney and your house is beautifully decorated. And how does that, what is, 
what is it like to um, to be Christina's kids? It's so fun. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny. I asked my daughter a few years ago, if you could pick one word to describe your mother, what would it be? Mm-hmm. And she thought about it for a few minutes, and she said, enthusiastic. Wow. And I was so excited oh. that that would be the word she would pick. And I think I asked her in a moment where I had been particularly neurat- naggy or neurotic, and so I was positive I was going to get a negative word. Um, mm-hmm. And I think if there's anything... Um, I'm trying to model for my kids. Mm -hmm. It's being really passionate about everything you do, Mm -hmm. to be there, to to be paying attention, to be committed. Um, They've seen me work a lot of long hours, but they've also seen the work I've produced. And Mm -hmm. if there's nothing else, I I want them to to enter adulthood thinking, I want to pursue something that I care about. And whatever that is, whether it's, making art or saving the planet, whatever that looks like, um, to find the thing you love and do it the best you can Mm -hmm. um, is the most important thing I can tell them. And uh, I was very proud to show them Big Hero 6 because I feel like that's in the movie. Mm. That's in the movie. What this boy does with his incredible... um, mind Mm -hmm. is to um, go out and fight crime ultimately and he goes on a long journey around that but uh, um, there's a passion and a fire to that movie that I think is uh, I hope will resonate with kids and will teach them something bring your skills Mm -hmm. and put them to uh, put them to a cause you feel strongly about Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I'll just say it's been interesting being a producer and being a mother. I find there's um, a lot of parallels. Mm. And people assume when I say that that I mean in terms of um, babysitting and nagging and monitoring a thousand details, and that's not true at all. Mm-hmm. It's more um, when you work with so many people and you really need to get inspire people to bring their best, mm-hmm. you you get really good at looking at things and finding how you're going to make the best use of it, inspiring people to bring their best animation skills, their best lighting skills, their best design skills, their best um, financial analysis skills. I mean, we have, we need all sorts of different talents to make, to put up a great movie. Mm -hmm. And it's really sort of finding your teammates and seeing what they're good at and then allowing them to do that. Mm-hmm. And I feel the same about uh, raising kids. It's it's seeing, figuring out what they're good at, and and giving them the opportunity to run with that. Mm-hmm. Um, this is so insightful. So, yeah, and I, you know, I think you really described um, sort of the balance. I can't really speak to parenthood just yet, but from a management perspective, to enable your team to do their very best know when to step in, when to step out. I, that is an art in itself, and that's very difficult to do. Uh, people have different needs, not to mention that for children is even more so. Um, when you provide them with tools and resources to do what they want to do, and also before that, supporting what they need to do. And um, you know, I must say that growing up in a very different culture, um, oftentimes, you know, my parents are very uh, free will, um, open-minded, but I'm sure there are still a lot of children in the world today, you know, tiger moms who are um, possibly thinking what they know best is best for their kids, and it doesn't sound like it's the case with you at all, and I, you know, I question, I, I wonder why your kids appear to be so worldly and so comfortable um, being who they are at such a young age, and that really um, hit me. Um, and I really appreciate you breaking that down. Um, I have a, um, a management style that served me really, really well in my career, which is whenever I work with someone I have never met before, mm-hmm. I always assume that they're going to bring their A game, mm-hmm. and I treat them as such. Mm-hmm. I treat them like I'm already... Uh, 
completely confident they're an A player. Mm -hmm. And an interesting thing happens when you start the conversation or the relationship like that with somebody. Mm -hmm. They want to prove you right. Mm. And it is amazing how when you give the opportunity to somebody to be great, Mm -hmm. they want to take it and show you they deserved it. And um, so I've been been really lucky to to have people who've just seen that as an opportunity and risen to the occasion. Mm -hmm. I love that and I I, now I feel like I remember there's one gentleman I I struggled working with and his philosophy was everybody sucks (laughs) you know and that's so opposite polar opposite and I love your approach. Um, and I would love to practice that in, in my, uh, on my own projects, much smaller projects as well. Um, this is wonderful. And I know that um, to respect uh, time, I have a million questions. I, I do want to bring up um, Paper Man real quick. And, yeah. You know, I, I embarrass myself by, um, obviously when it came out, I was thinking, Christina, Christina, I must watch this. And I realized uh, three seconds in, it's a love story. And uh-huh. I was thinking, wow, that's a tough one. How many times have love stories played out? And there's almost like no other way to, in my mind, this must be difficult. It's a challenge. And I realized I was so emotionally attached after just a couple of minutes. Of course, I was in tears. And I watched it a few more times. And I just couldn't help tearing up. And I just feel like the sensation in my body, like every neuron's connected. And uh, it's just, um, I know it sounds all cheesy, and I yes, I cried at, um, watching many, um, many uh, movies that you produced, um, but this particular one uh, really shocked me, and it won the first Oscar for Disney Animation Studio in since 1967 or 68, if I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. So... Do you mind telling me the, the sort of the production process? I know it's a very small team too. It's very different than Big Hero Six, which we just talked about. What what was it like for you? That was a really really fantastic experience. In that, um, when you produce a short in a studio that is used to making big features, mm-hmm. you are the littlest fish at the table and you work to oh you know every time somebody has a few minutes of spare time oh, there's a, a couple animators available for a week and a half mm-hmm. you grab that you bring them onto your project you you get the best work you can out of them and then you release them back and so mm-hmm. you're trying to sort of thread through randomly available resources and make something that has cohesion in the story Mm-hmm. but also have a cohesion in the crew where everybody feels like they're contributing to something meaningful. Mm-hmm. And um, it was a, just really um, kind of a, a, a challenge at every turn, but just in a way karmically blessed that project. We didn't know when we started exactly mm-hmm. how we were going to make these images. We didn't know exactly what the look was going to be. Mm. The director had a really clear sense of what he wanted, but we didn't know how we were going to get there. And um, mm-hmm. that's tricky when you have, as I say, sort of resources that come available here and there, and you're trying to piece it together. Mm-hmm. Um, and just by the time we had completed the first test shot, and stepped back and looked at it and had John Lasseter and Ed Catmull come look at it and they sort of stood there and it's the shot where she's um, it's a close up of her mm-hmm. at, the, at the flower stand and the airplane has just appeared mm-hmm. in front of her and she looks at it, she knows something's up so it's just that shot and um, I remember standing there and looking at it with Ed Catmull and John Lasseter and John Carr is the director mm-hmm. And John and Ed said, you guys have done something really interesting here. I could watch a movie of this. Wow. Keep going. Mm. Um, And then just that feeling of like, yeah, we've we've come up with something. We've done it. We figured it out. Now we just have to make the rest (laughs) of the movie look like this. Wow. Um, It's an amazing experience to produce it. And then it went out into the world and 
and people just um, embraced it and started doing cosplay. And um, I had a colleague of mine tell me just earlier this week that uh, his daughter used the Christoph Beck soundtrack to Paper Man for her wedding. No walked down way. the aisle. I mean, it's amazing that uh, it came out a couple of years ago and people still contact me to tell me how special it was to them. Mm -hmm. Um, And then to your point about it being a love story, and there's been many, many, many love stories told in the world, Mm -hmm. you know, there's a a thought in uh, people who write and develop stories that there's only, I don't know, seven or so original stories in the world. Yeah and that we just keep retelling them. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's absolutely true, and the whole challenge becomes execution. Mm-hmm. How are you going to tell a love story in a completely different way than it's ever been told before? Mm-hmm. And after Paper Man, I thought, okay, I have told the, the greatest love story I will probably ever tell in my lifetime. Wow. And then... Another little movie came along that I had the fortune of producing, and that's Feast, the short in front of Big Hero 6. I loved it. It was also a love story. (laughs) That is also a love story. And again, but uh, told in a way that is completely different than how you've seen a love story before. Mm, Different perspective, yeah whole different perspective and um, what I find particularly pleasing about Feast is it's not only a love story about a man and a woman who get together and ultimately start to make a family but it's also a love story about a dog for his owner Mm -hmm. and um, that gets me every time Mm -hmm. Um, I'm personally very attracted to stories of um, sort of sacrifice and Mm -hmm. um, giving yourself for the greater good Mm -hmm. and Winston does that in Feast and I think Hero actually Baymax does that in Mm -hmm. Big Hero 6 Mm -hmm. and those stories those two movies really resonate to me Mm -hmm. because in the end mm -hmm. that's all we're here to do is is make the, the bigger planet a better place to be Mm -hmm. So those movies are near and dear to my heart. Absolutely. I think you have the opportunity, when I think about a movie at this level of talent, production cost, and, um, you know, I I cannot imagine the um, box ticket, you know, sales at this point. It's not even about that, but having the platform, the resources to really tell a story that's going to resonate with people possibly for centuries, you know, and I think Disney in particular has that power and impact on people, um, you know, for someone my age and even much older, um, it's something that as a brand, as a storytelling engine, um, that, you know, they're staying with me for the rest of my life, and I'm so intrigued by both Feast and Paper Man. I'm going to interrupt you and yeah, just say, sorry. I know it's easy to... Um say, oh, well, Disney can tell great stories because they have a lot of resources, but Mm -hmm. I would love everyone listening to this podcast Mm -hmm. to um, just, with whatever resources they have, Mm -hmm. tell great stories. You don't need a lot of people or a lot of money or a lot of time to tell a great story. You're absolutely uh, right. um, Those are just details. You know, what what is it that you're trying to say Mm -hmm. and figure out a way to say it? And I think Paper Man is a perfect example. And I'm so intrigued by that project is because I look around on the dozens of projects I worked on. Some of the, the, you know, the most significant appreciated by users type of project are actually, were actually side projects. To your point, I never had a dedicated resource working on them necessarily and um, sometimes not even support from the company. and. But somehow, when you pour your heart into it, many possibilities um, just really become realities. And, yeah, they um, unlock. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they unlock. And, and I was wondering, how did Paper Man come about? And how, did you, how could you assemble such a short team for execution? How was it born? 
Well, the director, John Cars, had spent his 20s living in New York, Mm -hmm. and he uh, had a job as an animator for a a very uh, well-respected studio. Mm -hmm. Um, He was reverse commuting out of the city each day to get to his job, Mm -hmm. and he felt like he should, in his 20s, with a great job and a vibrant city, he should be having the time of his life. Mm -hmm. And yet he found himself really rather lonely. And he would stand at the subway station regularly and lock eyes with somebody, and then they'd be gone onto their train or whatever, and he'd stand there wondering, were you my soulmate? Mm -hmm. Was I supposed to do something to make this happen? Mm -hmm. And out of that idea, which I think all of us can relate to, Mm -hmm. came the story of Paper Man. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's interesting is he and I had very similar backgrounds. We'd grown up in the world of CG, and um, that's the that's the medium we really understood, and we had spent the bulk of our careers in it. And then both of us arrived at Disney around the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, this was before Paper Man was greenlit. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we had the same sort of marvel at the beauty of hand-drawn art and mm-hmm. hand-drawn animation. When you walk the halls at Disney, there's mm-hmm. original cell art hanging mm-hmm. on the walls. There's mm-hmm. there's drawings everywhere. And you see people just, you know, doodling and amazing things come out of their pens. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, both of us had the same, like, wow, this is an art form we never really appreciated before. We never really understood before. Mm-hmm. And interestingly, for me, I, at the time, I was the head of production, and I started wondering, God, how can we mash 2D and 3D together? Is there something, is there some way that we're not thinking of mm-hmm. that these two can coexist in a frame and actually plus each other? Mm-hmm. And being Disney, the only studio in the world that has talent in both arenas, you know, how can we take advantage of our unique uh, crew. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's I was sitting at that juncture, and John, meanwhile, had this short paper man that he had fleshed out on his own time, mm-hmm. and he started wondering how he wanted to work hand-drawn artistry into telling the story. Mm-hmm. And uh, when he pitched it to Disney, it was already you know, a a very strong idea. It already done a lot of storyboards and a cut on it. Mm -hmm. Um, But he pitched to them, you know, I want to, I want to mash up these two, these two uh, mediums. Mm -hmm. And the studio said, let's, let's do it. And Christina, you've been so passionate about giving this a try. You should go produce that project. (laughs) And that's how we came together. Wow. And I hadn't, I didn't know him before I worked at Disney, and before we worked together on Paper Man, I, I, I knew him only, you know, as a colleague. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just had, I, I mean, I, I think if you were on the phone, he'd tell you too. This, this movie was a life-changing experience for us because mm-hmm. um, it just really demonstrated when you, when you believe in something, when you're passionate, you want to experiment with something. Mm-hmm. You put your heart and soul into it. Mm-hmm. Um, you can make something you're really proud of, and that other people will respond to. Mm-hmm. This is wonderful. I had no idea how the story came about, and now I feel like you just painted a path, a picture, and uh, all the dots are now connected. And then the it really resonated with me um, the fact that you know hand drawn um, pictures. It just really hit home for me that something I grew up watching and reminded me as a, as a kid again and really thank you for telling me the story and you know to respect your time I think I have um, we're just about to hit the, the mark do mm-hmm. I have time for one more question of course okay great um, so I, I would you know a lot of the my audience it span across like a huge age range there are people fresh out of school possibly still in school and people with experience and possibly with a dream of always want to work for disney understand um you know work for work in animation um i was wondering you know what did it take for you 
to be um, part of this uh, empire. And but really, it's a very competitive industry, and it's a very male-dominated industry as well. Um, so, what was the journey like for you? Um, what did it take to do what you well, did? Well, I would actually say that I think animation is one of the friendliest um, arenas in the entertainment industry for women. Mm -hmm. There are many great women producers and many of whom have mentored me in my career. Mm -hmm. So it's very open in terms of that uh, career path. Mm -hmm. um, in general, making an animated picture takes all kinds of skills. Everybody comes to the table mm -hmm. bringing something to the party. You know, we need, and we need so many people because we need so many uh, specialties. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested in animation, um, whatever your specialty is, whether it's math, coding, mm -hmm. science, um, physics, art, motion, mm -hmm. managing money, <laughs> mm -hmm. managing time, um, working with people, marketing, designing toys, the whole gamut. Everybody, there's so many players, every skill is needed. Mm -hmm. And um, if people have dreamed of working for Disney but thought, oh, I, I don't draw or mm -hmm. I don't paint or mm -hmm. I don't whatever, mm -hmm. I would encourage them to rethink that because it does take all sorts of talents to, to put a picture up. Nice. Um, and uh, then in, in general, um, you know, at the end of the day, I always say it's it's... It's not about the movies you make. I've been fortunate to make great movies, but it's really about the people you work with day in and day out. Those mm -hmm. are the things that I think you remember as you're in the waning years of your life is who were the people that you sat side by side with and solved difficult problems. Mm -hmm. And it's all about having great relationships and respecting other people. And mm -hmm. um, the skills... I brought when I first walked in the door was I had put myself through college and I had mad money management skills nice. <laughs> um, and just a deep appreciation for art and talent and as I said all my life I've treated people like I automatically start from the place that they're bringing their A game mm -hmm. and uh, over the years those those skills have led me to where I am now but um, it's been an incredible journey, to be totally honest. I haven't sat and thought about it in a little bit. It's mm -hmm. been an incredible journey. This is great. I you know, really appreciate this. And um, I have so much material that I want to listen to over and over again. And this is, again, I think women really prefer to hear from um, women in leadership. And thank you so much for your time. Um, Christina. Thank you, Faye. Oh, I really, really enjoy. enjoyed this. To listen to more episodes of the Face World podcast, please subscribe on iTunes or visit faceworld.com. That is F E I S W O R L D, where you can find show notes, links, other tools, and resources. You can also follow me on Twitter at Face World. Until next time, thanks for listening. <laughs>